Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's see if we got the hang of this mutual coupling thing. Here's another circuit, some inductors, some mutual coupling. Let's see if we can find the voltage rises and drops for each of the two meshes in this particular circuit. All right, then on the next video we'll go ahead and try to find the currents, but the most important part right now is learning and knowing how to find all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops in each of the loops. So here again, we have two loops. We have an assumed current direction for I1 and I2 in a clockwise direction. You don't have to do it that way. You can have them in opposite directions. You can have one going clockwise, the other one going counterclockwise. It really doesn't matter. Secondly, we need to assume a direction of travel around the loop to, to the KVL loop to add up all the voltage rise and drops around every loop. And again, I like to just assume that we're going to travel around each loop in a clockwise direction. Again, you don't have to do that. You can, one go, can go clockwise, the other one can go counterclockwise. It really doesn't make any difference. I just like consistency and that's why I just always do it the same way. You need to pick a point to start. And of course, you have to remember the rules. When you cross a power supply or a voltage source, then you look at the signs of the source. And if you travel from the negative to the positive, regardless of the current direction, in this case, that's a voltage rise. So we have 100 volts with a phase angle of 60 degrees. And let's call that the KVL1. All right, now we go across and now as I go around the loop, I will have a voltage drop for every one of the components relative to the current I1 since I'm traveling in the same direction as the current. So I have a voltage drop here that would be minus 5 times I1. I have a voltage drop there, so that's a minus J2 I1. And I have a voltage drop here which is a minus J6 I1. And now what I also have to worry about, is because now I'm all the way back here, but I can't go equal zero yet because I have a current I2 going through this inductor. And now notice now that the current goes this way and I'm traveling the opposite direction. When you travel in the opposite direction of the current, that gives you a voltage rise. So that would be plus J6 times I2, the current that's causing the voltage rise. Now I have to look at all the mutual coupling. So there's going to be three for loop one. One where the current through this one will affect the current here. The current through this one will affect the current there. And of course, there's two currents going through this inductor affecting this inductor. There's one current going through this inductor affecting this inductor. So there's a total of three mutual couplings. So let's start with this and this. So I1 goes to this inductor and notice we have an I1 through this inductor. So notice that um, since I1 travels from in on the dot and here not in on the dot, we'll look at the rules when the currents enter opposite. So I1 enters the dot here and I1 does not enter the dot here. So that means it's opposite. You'll have a voltage rise and a voltage rise of J3 times, of course, I1 because I1 through this inductor is affecting that inductor. So that means a voltage rise plus J3 times I1. But notice, you also have an I2 through this inductor now. I2 enters the dot, I1 here enters the dot. So in this case, they enter the same, that means a voltage drop, that would be minus J3, be J3, times the current here that's causing it, which is I2. And finally, we have this inductor, which is affected by this inductor. Notice we have I1 going through this inductor right here, entering on the opposite side of the dot, and we have I1 here entering on the same side as the dot. That means they enter on opposite sides, we have a voltage rise caused by I1 going to this inductor, affecting this inductor. So we have plus I1 uh, plus uh, that, that J3 times I1. And now I have accounted for all three mutual couplings. So this one right here, this one right here, and this one right there in the first loop, then this here let's, is the current I2 going to this inductor, and then here, these three, that's caused by I1, um, go, well, since we travel in the same direction as I1, we have the three voltage drops of the three components in loop one. So that's how you do that. Now we probably should simplify that somewhat. Let's see here, we have uh, 
negative 5 i1, so we have minus 5 i1, and then we have minus j2, that's minus j8, that's minus 5, and that's minus 2, so minus j2 multiplied times i1. How about i2? So we have uh, plus, uh, we have plus 6, and minus 3, that's plus 3, that would be j3 times i2. And then we have this one right here, when we move that to the opposite direction, we have this is equal to a negative 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees, because I'm crossing the equal sign. And then since I have a lot of negative signs here, I can multiply everything by a negative, so it becomes 5 plus j2 in the i direction, i1, I should say in the i direction, this times i1, and then minus uh, j3 times i2 equals 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees, and that's the simplified format of my first equation for KVL1. Now let's do it again for KVL2. And let's start over here. I'm going to travel around the loop in the same direction as the current, so I will have voltage drops. There's two components, so first voltage drop right here. I have a, a minus J6 times I2, and then I have a voltage drop here again, but notice my reactance is negative, so negative times negative gives me a positive, so positive J4 I2. And so that accounts for all the components affected uh, here and the current I2, but this component right here also has a current I1. I travel in this direction, direction of travel, but the current is in the opposite direction. So when the current is in the opposite direction as the direction of travel, we get a voltage rise. So that becomes a plus 6, oop, I guess we write the J first, J6, and that was times I1. And then finally there's some mutual coupling. Notice that the current going through here will affect this one right here. We have I1 traveling through here, enters on the dot here, and notice that um, I2 enters also on the dot, so I1 enters on the dot, I2 enters on the dot, which means same voltage drop. So here we have a voltage drop due to the mutual coupling, so we have a minus J3 times the current that causes it, and that equals zero. Let's put a line here so we don't get confused. Now let's combine like terms. We have a plus six minus three that gives us J3 for I1, and for I2 we have a plus four and a minus six that gives me minus J2 I2, and that equals zero. And there's my second equation. So now I have my two equations. I have my KVL1 equation, KVL2 equations, two unknowns, I1 and I2, and I can then go ahead and solve those. I'll show you on the next video how to do that, but the most important part is getting these two equations right. If you don't get those right, you make one little mistake somewhere, you're not going to get the correct answer. So you have to go through it very carefully, make sure you follow the rules to the T, and then you'll get the right equations. And that is how it's done.